So, uh, earlier there was a picture of my greenhouse that has no thermal mass, it's just a hoop and it's a low hoop, so you imagine it's small and low, you imagine uh, it would, and it's well sealed, so you imagine it would have a lot of um, heat retain, retention at night, but when it got down to 25 degrees the other week, it killed everything in it, except for, of course, the greens. Tomato plants are totally dead, but look at these guys. Same area. In fact, I'm lower down here, so it should be colder. Uh, maybe about 50 feet lower. And everything is unscathed by the 25 degree temperature. Why? Well, because this was an old house. I used logs to span uh, where the roof used to be. And um, the front is just logs. So this is minimal cost. Got some nice greens growing there. And... Um, Oh yeah, look at these tomatoes. Beautiful, these are Arkansas Traveler. There's one getting ripe there. Oh wow, these are delicious too. And of course these are unscathed. Anybody tells you greenhouse tomatoes can't taste good, these are absolutely delicious. It's the method of growing that makes them tasteless and the varieties that they use. But look at this fig tree and it's got figs on it. And a banana tree. And I don't know, that, that survived last winter in here without any heating, so. Uh, it did get frosted, but it didn't kill it, and so it grew back. And uh, we've got guavas growing there. And uh, that's my seeding table, a bit of a mess right now, I haven't had time. But, and here's my uh, sweet potatoes, greens, which you can eat in the winter, and uh, they won't last maybe a whole winter, although they might over by this wall. And I've got a bunch of kale and chard growing in there too. And then uh, edible canna kind of lily so wow uh, look at that banana tree so here's the secret this is a uh, wall is south facing it's on the north end of the house and it's very thick and so it soaks up the heat during the day also this old uh, chimney place which actually is functional but I boarded it up because the squirrels were liking uh, sort of like a resort for them in the winter where they could come in and destroy everything so uh, yeah, so that, that is a lot of thermal mass, and of course, thermal mass wall here. And so what this does is it works as a passive heater at night, uh, giving off the heat. And just, this is south facing, the front of the house was rotted out. This is called the old Snodgrass house. It was all rotted out, and then of course we got a thermal mass unit over there, that, which is like a little shed. It was a bathroom. And what I'm going to do over that, unfortunately that does block some sun, but to make it useful I'm going to put a clear roof on it. So on the day it will heat that whole thick mass of concrete up because it's got thick walls on all four sides and it'll, it'll um, I don't know, I might even put more mass in it. It will give off heat also. Um, so yeah, nice. So just a broken down old house on the property that we built on, that we homesteaded on. And uh, you know, here it is, it's bermed, partly bermed, that back wall. So that also helps retain heat. Now I haven't had time because I'm building to really look after this and dress it up the way I'd like to. That's a pepper there, arroz con pollos. Um, tastes like hot pepper but doesn't have quite the hotness, which is what I like. And some beautiful parsley here. So this is while I'm busy and don't have really any time to garden. But just an example of what you can do. Oh yeah, my watering system, passive watering. Um, I do have water that I can bring down from the house by hose. See that green hose going in, but um, simple manner of watering is I put a rock up there. It weighs the plastic down just a little, put some nail holes in it, and when it rains, guess what? It rains on my plants. Same over here, it keeps this 50 gallon barrel full just from a rock and some nail holes. The nail holes aren't sufficient to really cause too much heat loss. Same thing over my tomato plants. So that when I'm gone for periods of time, uh, usually they're not going to die because they, they get some moisture, you know. Got some kale growing down there too. So yeah, it's a mess, but uh, this is an example of what you can do even when you have no time and when you're actually clearing land and building. Uh, this was put, took a couple of weeks to build. Um, and it was quite a job getting those, but they're cedar logs, so they weren't that heavy, but we had to hoist those up there. And so it's about 25 by by 25 or so. And uh, yeah, food for the winter.